Hey everybody, it's Kalaxon here, and if you guys enjoyed this video, remember that you guys should become patrons over on Patreon. If you guys want to support the channel, talk with us more, and join our Discord server, because you guys have kept asking about the Ruby Grim Eclipse rumors that it's gonna update soon and whatever. I decided before RTX, because we may get news about it there, I would do a video about it, just in case, uh, you know, just in case something comes out over there. I want to get my thoughts out on it first. Um, I was thinking about this last night and y'all are gonna be sorry <laughs> you asked about it because I am gonna make you guys sit through a very poorly thought out analogy which does have a point uh, to the current problem that Ruby Grim Eclipse is facing so here you go you guys are gonna be like what the fuck is Cal on uh, lack of sleep is one thing <laughs> If you guys have watched my 23andMe video, y'all know, like, as I get older, I'll be prone to blood clots. That's something that they told me, and yeah, this is exactly where we are going today, and I promise it's gonna make sense. Right now, I'm healthy. I'm new in comparison to when I'll be 80 years old and ancient. Some people have this problem, some people don't. In my deranged mind at 3 in the morning, this reminded me of video games. <laughs> some video games will never change, right? When you buy them, that's the way that they're gonna be forever. They get older, but maybe they don't suffer the same health problems as other do. Some games are, are timeless, right? But I would argue that most multiplayer online games suffer from the problem that they get old and they don't have that timelessness of something that stays uh, the same forever or stays, you could say, quote-unquote, healthy forever and sometimes they age so rapidly that they just die. So back to the blood clots. The r problem with Ruby Grim Eclipse updating in the fashion that they've been updating, in my opinion, is that instead of trying to prevent a blood clot that will usually cause, like, you know, heart attacks or a cardiac arrest or a cardiac event or whatever you want to call it, they are letting the game be so incredibly close to death that before, you know, before it dies, they're like, oh, we gotta defibrillate it, and they're hoping for the best, right? If you guys don't know a defibrillator is, like, that electric thing that you, like, press on someone when they're having a heart attack. This is what Ruby Grim Eclipse is, to me. It's like a patient that has been left untreated for such a long time, it just ends up having a heart attack, but instead of doing something about it after, you know, you defibrillate at that time, the doctors go, ah, they should keep them going for a while, until they're brought back to the hospital and defibrillated again. And one of these days, that defibrillation isn't gonna work. And this seems extremely sketchy to me, because they keep basically letting the game almost die out completely before they decide to add new DLC to bring the game back to life, and then they just ignore it again. Juniper as an update happened two years ago. I started doing my Ruby videos two years ago when that update <laughs> happened, and there was a costume update a couple months later, but it's basically been two years since the game has had a meaningful update, right? And it seems like that now that the game is dead, they're like, oh shit, we gotta do something. Not because they care about the game or like the starved audience that the game has, or rather, they know that the current audience is so starved that they'll literally buy anything that comes out for the game. And that seems like incredibly taking advantage of people that you ignored for the past two years, right? And I have a really big issue with that, because most online games are constantly updating, with constant updates. It's not really realistic for the scale of, like, for Ruby and the Ruby development team to have, like, I guess compare them to bigger online games, right? But it seems like they're only adding a new team when they know it'll bring people back, make them more money, or bring the, in new people that are like, Oh, this is cool, and then they get sucked in and realize that they're gonna be ignored for two years just like the rest of us. Instead of making constant improvements to the game. And this is where we're going back to blood clots, right? To prevent blood clots, most people go on blood thinner. That is my future over here, guys. But... This translates back into what I'm saying about Grim Eclipse. They can make small updates every month, I'm sure, to prevent the death of the game, and it won't take a long time for the development team, in my opinion. And you guys may be like, hell, what do you know about video games? And like, to be honest, I'm not a coder, okay? I... The most I've made is a visual novel, alright? And so maybe I'm not the most qualified person to be speaking about what will go quickly, but I've seen indie developers that are one person do this faster than the Ruby team. And so it's not necessarily that I know from experience, but I've seen other 
either one person teams or just small teams in general be able to kind of update faster than Grim Eclipse is updating. Like this could be simple as like updating the textures one month, adding new lines another month, maybe improving some of the animations, maybe adding another collectible. For me, the most grating part of Grim Eclipse is the fighting music because it feels like it's the same everywhere. <laughs> and so they could have music from, like, to sample from the two extra volumes by now. Like, they could have certain music play at times if you're using a specific character, because at least all the Ruby Girls have themes, right? And I think that, like, that's one of the problems that, like, Grim Eclipse suffers a little bit, is in the music department. And so it would be nice that, yeah, you have this music for one area, but it's also sort of randomized, so you never necessarily know what you're gonna get. So, you know, in the Emerald Forest, you have a, like, a regular theme and a battle theme but what if sometimes you heard like a little bit of like i burn or something or red like roses if you're playing with root whatever anyway even adding more achievements right since they you know most of us have completed the game by now and instead of letting the game die for almost two years like since a meaningful edition like i mentioned there could be small parts of the game that are fine-tuned and improved like for the experience of the people that already paid and again i am not like i don't care about grim eclipse like to be honest and i know that you guys know that because we're not playing it anymore and so it's not really for me but i can see why people that have been sort of, you know, a fan of this game for two years, or, or, or more than two years, two years since the last update, right? Um, because it was volume four, uh, right before volume four, and right before Hunter and I started doing volume four, that this sort of stuff happened, but I'm saying, like, I can see why the fans that supported this game are now like, y'all fucking ghosted us, right? And get, I don't know, upset about that. I think that's a fine thing to get upset about, especially when I don't think the game is necessarily worth uh, the price that it's usually at. I got it for half price, I think, um, when I bought it, so I'm not that mad. But if you're buying the game at what is its full price, and this is what you're getting, and then you're also like getting ghosted by the, by the devs and they're like, oh, we're gonna update soon, you know what I mean? And they're only updating soon because, again, the game is in a dire state right now. And that's another thing, right? This game has a lot of mods. And the mods are a bit tricky to install, in my opinion, but I think that's more of a Steam problem and a me problem than anything. Like, I'm used to installing Minecraft mods. Like, that is what I was... Like, that is my top skill when I was 13. Um, but anyway... If the modding community can make a PvP mode, right, or a soccer mode, would it really be so hard to add those modes into the game if that's what people want? Like, listen, I don't care about the soccer thing, but somebody found a soccer ball, textured it, gave it the bounce animation or physics or whatever you want to call it, and put it into Grim Eclipse. And the PvP mode should be literally no big deal since all the characters already have attacks and movesets. Like, you'd really only need... Uh, to code the thing so they can hit each other, because in Grim Eclipse you can't do friendly fire, and also animations for uh, hitting other people if that's gonna look any different uh, to hitting Grim, which I don't think that they do, but anyway, judging from everything else in this game, right? Whether it'd be balanced between the characters is a different story, but that's why testing new ideas is important. But to me, it doesn't seem like they want to test out new ideas. They don't want to update things in the game that could use updating, and to me, I think this is really sad. Because I feel like they only care about shaking down people who have already bought the game, right? Like, these <laughs> these desperate people that are like, please give me Team Co Coffee or, like, Team Sun, right? And that's all that they want. They're just like, please give us something, you know? Like, these people that have bought the game, right? And then they want to convince new people to pour money into the game through new DLC before also leaving them in the dust as well. That is how I see it. So... I think that we've learned some lessons here today. You guys don't want me talking about Grim Eclipse. I'm happy to cover the news that comes out on it. Um, obviously, like I said, a couple of you guys asked about the update rumor. I bet that y'all are sorry you asked. Like, oh god, what did we do? You know what I mean? Because a couple people that are in the Patreon uh, Discord server and a couple of people in the comment section have asked and they're probably like, oh god, like what can of worms did I open up and what is this all about blood? Right, because, um, that was my horrible analogy that I thought of last night to try and explain this in a good way. <laughs> but anyway, 
I, again, um, I bet y'all are sorry you asked, but, you know, if you enjoyed this video, remember that you guys should become patrons over on Patreon, uh, to support us, and unlike Ruby Groom Eclipse, I promise that I post new content at least every two years, uh, but usually it's about every day with early access or once a week with a journal update. So anyway, I hoped to see you guys over there, uh, but if you need me, I'll be playing Ruby Amity Arena, so, uh, I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.